Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating an explosion in Cinema 4D and Turbulence FD. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get unlimited access to more than 22,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The courses are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating everything from motion graphics to photography. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got four CG Shortcuts courses on there now, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. And we're releasing new courses all the time. So if you want to give Skillshare a try, the first 1,000 to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, giving you instant access to the entire catalogue of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts, so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need the Turbulence FD plugin for Cinema 4D, and we'll leave a link down below to where you can get a free demo of the software if you want to give that a try. All right, so let's head over to the extensions menu, which might be called plugins in older versions of Cinema 4D. And right down the bottom here, we've got our Turbulence FD menu. And we'll be using a bunch of these tools. So for easy access, let's just click and tear that menu off and we can put it up here for now. So the first thing we're going to need to create an explosion is actually an object that we can use as an emitter. And you can emit fire and explosions from pretty much anything. But in this case, we're going to emit from Cinema 4D's standard particle emitter. And we can find that up here in the simulate menu under particles. And here's our particle emitter. So we'll bring that in and we'll head over to the particle tab to set this up. And we want a quick burst of particles, like an explosion of particles. So we'll increase the particle birth rate to 10,000 in both the editor and the renderer. And we only want this quick explosion to last a few frames. So we'll have it start on frame zero and quickly stop on frame seven. So let's see what that gives us. Just as we'd expect, a quick burst of particles shooting off in that direction. Obviously though, we want our explosion to travel upward. So let's hit R on the keyboard to grab our rotation tool and just rotate it so it faces upward. Then back here, I also want the particles to vanish quickly as well. So let's change the particle lifetime to 12 frames. And we can also add a bit of variation to that so things don't vanish too abruptly. And I also want to speed up the particles so they travel a bit more explosively. So let's double this to 300. And again, we'll add some variation to the speed as well. So let's see what that looks like. All right, we're almost there with our emitter. But rather than having these guys go straight up, I also want them to explode out a bit on an angle. So we'll go to the emitter tab and change the emitter type from pyramid to cone and we'll angle our cone out to 45 degrees. And I want the explosion to come from a smaller point as well. So we'll also shrink our X and Y scale down to 50 centimeters. And we'll check that out. All right, that looks more explosive to me. So now we can use this to drive the velocity of our explosion simulation. So let's make our emitter a Turbulence FD source. So we'll right click on it and under the Turbulence FD tag section, we'll add a Turbulence FD emitter tag. Then we'll make sure that that is set to active. And because we're driving this with particles, which are just points in space without any surface area, we can also increase the radius. So we'll try five centimeters in here. So each particle has a bit of thickness. Then we'll head down to the channels, which is probably the most important thing we need to set up in Turbulence FD. This is where we can choose which data is going to be calculated in our fluid simulation. So depending on the kind of effect you're trying to create, whether it be an explosion, fire or smoke. Obviously, we're going for an explosion and where there's an explosion, there's going to be heat. So let's add temperature to our simulation by setting this value to one. And we'll also need to calculate the density and the fuel as well. And those three are the main components for creating explosions. So now we can pop open the force tab and here's where we can tell our fluid simulation to be driven by the velocity of our particle emitter. So we'll make the velocity weight two and we also wanna add some pressure to our simulation so it explodes outward. So we'll try a value of one in here. Okay, so that's the main explosion part set up, but I also wanna add a secondary explosion along the ground. So kind of like a shockwave of smoke and fire. So let's duplicate our emitter and we'll call this shockwave. 
Then down in the particle tab, we'll decrease the particle birth rate to 1000. And over in the emitter tab, I want these particles to shoot out across the ground. So we'll adjust the angle to 90 degrees. And let's see what that gives us. Nice. So we've got our main explosion upward and a shockwave ring spreading out along the ground. So now we're ready to turn our particles into a fluid simulation. So this time let's bring in a turbulence FD container. And as the name suggests, this will contain our fluid simulation or our voxels. But we need to make sure it encompasses our particle explosion. So down under the container tab, we just need to increase our grid size and we need to make this big enough to fit all of our particles in. Plus a little bit of extra room for our explosion to take place. Then we'll hit the middle mouse button and head over to a side view. And we want this container to sit a bit closer to the ground plane. So let's hit E on the keyboard to switch to our move tool. And we'll just bring this up to about there. And it doesn't need to be perfectly on the ground plane. And a little bit of space down here should be fine. Okay, let's go back to our perspective view and grab our container. Before we sim this, we just wanna check our voxel size here. This is more or less a resolution setting. So the smaller this number, the higher the resolution and the more detailed the sim is going to be. And the amount you can take this down to is also going to depend on your machine. So for now, while we test this, let's use a lower resolution of maybe five. And we can also come back to this and lower this number later when we're ready to do our final simulation. Okay, so next we need to set a location on our hard drive where we can cache our simulation data to. So just pick a directory where you know you've got plenty of space available because these can be huge files. And now we're ready to turn our particles into a fluid simulation. So let's sim this. We'll open our Turbulence FD simulation window and we'll just dock that into here and make a bit of space here. And we need to cache this so we can actually view the simulation. And Turbulence FD supports CPU and GPU simulation. So if you've got a decent GPU, I'd recommend using that to calculate your sim as it's probably going to do it a lot faster than using your CPU. So I think we're good with these settings. So let's hit start and cache this sim out. And you can see at a resolution of five that calculates super fast using our GTX 970 GPU. All right, so let's rewind this and frame it up a bit better. And we'll hit play. And I think this explosion is already looking pretty good, but we can definitely tweak some of the settings and add a bit more detail in there. So we'll head over to the simulation tab and here's where we can find a lot of the tools to help us really refine the look of our simulation. And we won't go into all of these in this tutorial, but it is worth experimenting with these to see what kind of effects you can get. So let's start over in the solver section here. For the sake of speed, it's a good idea to make sure adaptive container is enabled. So the simulation container automatically fits itself to the simulation. So it doesn't need to calculate every voxel within the entire container shape. And this will definitely give you a big speed increase, especially while you're doing your testing and for when you do your final simulation. So always leave this on. Also in this particular scene, we could go to the closed container boundaries menu and stop our adaptive container from growing in the negative Y direction. So it won't expand down here if any of the fluids head in that direction. Everything will just be cut off, which is fine because that's the ground plane anyway. Okay, let's close that up and move on to the fuel section. Let's activate this and we'll set the fuel diffusion to one centimeter and scroll down a tad. And we'll also make the fuel expand as it explodes and increase the density as the fuel is burnt. And to be honest, a lot of these settings are just trial and error and you'll definitely need to do some tweaking and testing to get the right look. Okay, let's close fuel up and head over to temperature. Obviously our fireball is going to need to cool down gradually after the initial explosion and release of that energy. So let's increase the cooling. And I also want the fireball to keep rising as the simulation plays out. So let's also increase the buoyancy. And that's it for temperature. Let's move on to density and activate the settings for that. And I just wanna increase the dissipation a tad. So the density dissipates a little bit quicker. And these are just some of the settings that I usually change. But the next few sections are probably going to make the biggest impact on the overall look of our explosion. And that includes the vorticity, which will help amplify all the swirling and curling shapes in our simulation and give it a lot more detail. So I like to increase this quite a bit to maybe six. And the other section that's going to make things look a bit more interesting is over in the turbulence. And you're probably pretty familiar with turbulence if you've done any dynamics in Cinema 4D. 
Increasing this is going to make our smoke and fire a bit more turbulent and hence more detailed. So let's increase that to 80. And we can also adjust the frequency of our turbulence by setting the smaller size and larger size of the turbulence. Okay, so let's resim this and see how our explosion is looking now. And we can overwrite our previous sim to save some space, so we'll okay that. Okay, so that's done. Let's play that back from the cache data. And it's actually not looking very impressive, is it? And I think that's because we're not seeing all of the detail going on in the density channel. So let's go to the viewport preview tab here, and you can see we're currently looking at temperature only. And that's just the heat in the simulation. But if we switch to density, and we'll also map some color to the density. So it looks more like a fiery explosion rather than this blue color. So if we pop this arrow open, we can come down here and choose a preset gradient. And we'll just pick one that has some nice warm fiery colors like this one here. And now if we play that back, we're getting a much more explosion looking sim. And it kind of looks like a mini nuclear bomb explosion. So from here, we could go back to the container settings and increase the resolution by decreasing the voxel size for our final sim. But Turbulence FD actually has a cool upresing feature that you can run over the top of your original sim to increase the quality. And that can be found right here in the Turbulence FD menu. So let's give it a try. And it's saying for this to work, it also needs access to the velocity data from the cache. So that's an easy fix. We just need to go over to the container tab and down here in the cache settings, we'll just enable velocity caching as well. And that's going to mean we'll need to recache this and this is going to give us the same cache again without the upresing, but this time we'll also include the vorticity information. And now that that's recached, we can use this new data for our upresing. But before we do that, it might be worth pointing out that we have our upres settings over here, and this is where we can adjust the amount of upresing if we want to. But let's just leave these on the defaults. So to upres this, we can either hit upres up here again, or we can come down here and switch the mode from cache to upres. And now we can start upresing. And before that kicks off, it's just warning us that it's going to take up a lot of RAM to perform the upresing process. But hopefully we've got enough in this machine, so let's hit OK, and it'll start doing its thing. And the process is probably going to take quite a bit longer than the initial caching, so we'll speed this up a tad for the video. And now that that's done, if we zoom in, we should be able to see some extra detail in that sim. And you can see the curls and turbulence are looking a bit more detailed and sharper. And also, if your machine can handle it, you can decrease the voxel size back in your container, and that should give you even better results. But just be aware, you might be in for some very long simulation times. I actually used a voxel size of two for our final simulation, and the upresing on this took about an hour to calculate. And all the final cache files actually took up about 100 gigabytes on my machine. So you'll definitely need plenty of space, a fast computer, and plenty of RAM to be doing any kind of fluid or voxel simulations. And that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Turbulence FD is definitely a great tool to use for all of your fire, smoke, and explosion effects in Cinema 4D. So as usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time, or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other CG assets and resources. Big thanks to this month's patrons and CG insiders. You guys are the best, and there's no way we could keep making all of these tutorials without your support. Cheers, guys. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website, and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time.